algebra students, Mr. Lawrence here with your spring break video. And I want to start off by saying that if you did really well on your test, if you got an A or a B on this test, you do not need to watch the first part of the video. You need to uh, pick up the video when I get to the story problem. I'll try to let you know what the time counter is uh, when I do it, but right now I don't know because I'm creating the video. Anyway, so this first part is for the people who did not get at least a B. Uh, I'd like you to watch uh, the first two-thirds of the video. You can stop after you see this problem. Did you catch that? I said after. You must watch this part with the rocket problem. Okay, and there are three parts to it. So you're not supposed to stop until you've seen all three parts. And something weird is really happening there. I don't understand that. Um, all right. Anyway. Now, there's a one more problem here on the last page, and that is uh, for the people who got A's or B's. So if you didn't get an A or B, you don't have to watch that part at all. Okay. Now, for the people who didn't get at least an A or B, some of you failed the test because you're on spring break, you don't care, you don't think it matters, you think it's just like last year. There's nothing I can do for you. There is nothing I can do for you. If you have the attitude that it doesn't matter and you don't want to do your best, then you're going to fail. There is nothing I can do. All right? You may not like that answer, but you are the determiner of your success. If you do your best, I can help you. If you're not going to do your best, you're wasting your time, you're wasting my time, and that's it. So let's move on. Let's get, get your F, and you can retake the class next year, and then we'll, you know, you, maybe you'll learn it next year. I don't know. Okay, now most of you, that's not the case. Most of you had a hard time with the test for a different reason. And I know exactly what the reason is. <clears throat> you were working hard trying to graph all the parabolas. And you know when there's two solutions, one solution, no solution. And when you did the no solution ones, you found out that they seemed a little bit easier than the two solution or the one solution ones. You found the vertex and you made a table and you plugged in a point and then you used symmetry to get the other point. And you may not have known you were going to do this. You may have done it unconsciously or subconsciously. But you decided that since it was so easy to just make a table, and all those other ones had so many little steps to them, that I'm just not going to worry about it. And then you try to apply that method to the types where there are solutions. Well, that produced a lot of problems. One because some of you weren't even trying to find the vertex anymore. You were just plugging zero in and then trying to use symmetry, and you were totally screwed up. And, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, so anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to try to get you straightened out. Now, I'm only going to do two samples of graphing, and I'm not going to graph any that don't have no solutions. And your assignments in class tomorrow, you'll be focusing on the ones that have solutions. There will be some that don't but we're going to focus on the ones that do. The first thing we always do is find our discriminant. Look, I know you want to say, well, I want to write down A, B, and C. Yeah, but that's mindless. That, that's nothing. That should be automatic. The first real mathematical action that you're going to take is find the number of solutions by using the discriminant. Okay, so I'm going to do B squared minus 4AC. Yeah, I know you need to know what A, B, and C are. I know that. Don't tell me that's your first step. That's not even a step. All you're doing is writing down the numbers. They're right there. They're right in front of you. Okay? Your first step is to calculate the vertex. Now, by the way, you know I playfully get mad when you choose to not use parentheses. Um, it actually is very frustrating that you're choosing to not use parentheses. Very frustrating. I've told you many times, you will get it wrong if you don't use parentheses. And then I walk by, and sure enough, you don't use the parentheses, you don't think you need them, fine. Okay, but there's nothing I can do. If you won't do the techniques I show you, then you, how can you expect to get it right? Man, this thing is really acting up today. Okay, so I am going nuts here. All right, here we go. So I'm f calculating my, my number of solutions. So I'm going to get a positive 49, and I'm going to get a positive because there's two negatives, and that's 48, that's 480. Okay, so let's see, 49, 9, uh, 2. So 529 is uh, my discriminant. I know 
that I'm going to have two solutions. So now I'm going to go find them. I'm going to use x equals the negative of b plus or minus the square root of 529 all over 2a. And at this point, I can go to my calculator. But remember, I must put the numerator in parentheses. OK, so I'm going to go to my calculator. Let me get it up here. And let me get a large screen. And let me clear all that other stuff off. OK, so I'm going to do the quantity of 7 plus the square root of 529. Close that parenthesis and close the one I started and the divide by 24. And there we go. The first solution is 1 and a quarter. Now I can do second enter and do 7 minus the square root of 529 in the numerator. And when I do that, I get about negative 2 thirds. So 1 and a quarter and 2 thirds. So my solutions, my roots, uh oh, are at x equals 1.25, 1 and a quarter, and x equals uh, negative 0.6 repeating, which is 2 thirds. Okay, notice I didn't round anything. I didn't find the square root of this and round it. That changes the accuracy. These are on the x axis, so 1 and a quarter would be about there. Negative 2 thirds would be maybe there. Okay, I'm going to label them 1.250 and negative 2 thirds. Zero. Now, this parabola is opening up. How do I know? Because A was positive. Okay, some of you got that backwards. I'm not sure why, but you did. Okay. Man, we're really acting strange. Okay, so now I need to find the vertex. Well, the vertex is easy. I'm going to do the negative B over 2A. So, my vertex will change color here. I'm going to do the x-coordinate of the vertex. So the negative of b over 2a is 24, 7 24 /ths. So I'm going to take the 7 24 and I'm going to plug it in for x into this equation. I'm going to bring my calculator back up. And I'll let it handle the ugly numbers for me. So I'm going to go 12. Oops, wrong button. All right, hold on one second. All right. So 12, and then I've got 7 divided by 24. And I'm going to close the parenthesis and square it. The calculator knows the order of operations, so it'll do 7 divided by 24 because it's inside the parenthesis. Then it'll square it. Then it'll multiply by 12. Okay. All right, then I'm going to do minus 7 times 7 divided by 24. And then I'll do minus 10. And there we go. It looks like it's a little bit over negative 11. A little bit, yeah, a little bit smaller. So y is going to equal a negative... 11.0, what was it, 2, okay, that's close enough for rounding purposes. All right, so it's going to be, say, right about here. I'm going to let you go ahead and draw the parabola in, because you know, I'll try. They're just so far apart, it's difficult to do with the airliner. Okay, remember, you're trying to get that nice U shape. All right, so... The first step is always to find the discriminant. Always. Now, if there are no solutions, then you can go to the vertex. You'll always go to the vertex eventually. Oop, something's wrong there. Oh, I know what's wrong. Do you see it? X is at 724, not at 0. So it should be there. So this line is drawn, this parabola is drawn poorly. All right, let me try it again here. All right, 
something like that. Uh, okay, that's a little bit better. I should really get rid of this and this. Okay. So, always going to find the discriminant first, and then I am going to go after my vertex. Okay. I'll only go to a table if there are no solutions. All right. That's the best I can do right now with the airliner. So, let's try this one. Okay, first step, find the discriminant. So if you want to write down A, B, and C, you go ahead. But don't wimp out and tell me that's the first step. Okay, that's not. Mathematically, and if I sound a little bit frustrated, it's because some of you are choosing to constantly take the easy way out. And when you constantly take the easy way out, you don't learn, you don't achieve. I'm not sure why you're so afraid of learning. You're very intelligent people, but I don't get it. All right, so we've got 28 squared. You're saying, Mr. Lawrence, you didn't use parentheses. Well, it's a positive. It's not going to matter. But if you're the kind of kid that has to do it all the time, then put the parentheses in. Okay. Minus 4 times 49 times 4. And there we have a discriminant of 0, which means there's one solution. It means my solution is my vertex. So I found the discriminant first. Now I go for the vertex. The x coordinate of the vertex is the negative of b over 2a. Okay, so let me see. 28 divided by 49. No, excuse me, 98. Silly mistake there. And it would be negative, but I don't want to use that big, long, ugly decimal. You know what I can do? I can simplify this, or I can just use that. If I don't know how to simplify, well, I do know 2 is going to go in. Negative 14 over 49. Hey, 7 is going to go into both of those. Negative 2 over 7. But I could use this one. It doesn't matter. Watch. I'll use both, and you'll see I get the same answer. I'm going to go 49, quantity of negative 28 divided by 98. Close it, square it, uh, plus 28, so negative 28 divided by 49, and then plus 4. And look at that, I got negative 8 for an answer. Now watch what happens when I go 49 times negative 2 sevenths, oops, not 27, 2 sevenths. Don't forget to square it. Okay, plus 28, negative 2, divided by 7, uh, plus 4. Uh-oh, something's wrong. I got 0. Where is my mistake? I should have gotten the same thing. Hold on one second. Okay, I found my mistake. I think I keep mistyping the denominator. I've got 48 on the brain. So here you can see I retyped the first one. The, the fact that I didn't get 0 for the first one should have told me there was a mistake right off the bat. I didn't see it until I went to do it with the two sevenths, negative 2 sevenths. They both have to be 0 because there's only one solution. So I think that this should produce 0 when I plug it in now. And there we go. I do get zero. So you see, I did get the same thing other than my silly error. Okay, so I know the vertex occurs at negative two sevenths, zero. Negative two sevenths, zero is my vertex. So maybe right about there. Okay, um, now I can go to a table because there were no other solutions. And I know that the negative 2, 7, 0 
is my vertex. Remember, when you're finding the vertex, is x equals. That's an x coordinate. Some of you were putting in the y place and then sticking in front. It doesn't make any sense. Don't change the formulas. It's x equals negative b over 2a. You're getting the x coordinate of the vertex. Okay, if there's only one solution, your vertex must be sitting on the x axis. Okay, so now if I want, I'll plug 0 in for x and I'll plug negative 4 sevenths in for y, or excuse me, for x on the other side. And this will come out to be 4 and that will come out to be 4. And so we'll go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4 sevenths, just a little bit more than half. Four, and that's a very skinny parabola, and it's going to do something like that. Okay, so that's it for how to graph. Um, we will talk about it in class on Monday. Now, let's talk about the story problems, which should have been super simple. Remember, this is your ending height. End height. T is always your time. This is your starting velocity. And this is your uh, starting height. All right. So we have a rocket being launched off the ground with initial velocity of 128 feet per second. Well, right there, I can go h of t is going to equal negative 16 t squared. My velocity was. 128 feet per second. My starting height is the ground, so it's plus zero. Okay, how high did the rocket go and how long did it take to reach the height? What is that? It's the vertex. So I'm going to do my ABC. And I'm going to do t is equal to negative of b over 2a. And I think that's going to be 4. Pretty sure. All right. So it reaches the height in 4 seconds. I actually got the second question answered first. How high does it go? Well, I take the 4 and I plug it in for t. All right, so I think this is going to end up being negative 256. And let's see, this is going to be 512, I think. Yeah, and so that'll be 256 feet high. So it goes 256 feet high. All right, so B. When will the rocket hit the ground? That's my solutions. So I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So I'm going to do t equals the negative of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And so when I simplify this, negative 128 plus or minus, this turns to zero. The square root of a squared number is just the number itself. And that's over 32, and it's negative. So I've got two answers here. I've got negative 128 minus 128 divided by negative 32 which will be 256 divided by 32, which I think will be 8. I'm going to check that. I'm pretty sure it'll be 8. Uh, negative 28 minus 128. Then I'm going to divide it by negative 32. There we go, we got 8. Okay, and then my other solution is going to be t equals negative 128 plus 128 divided by negative 32, 
Well, that's 0 over negative 32, which is 0. Now, it starts at 0. So what I found was the time when it started, but I don't care. This is the other answer. So it'll hit the ground in 8 seconds. Okay, last part is, when will the rocket reach a height of 160 feet? H-I-G-H-T. Sorry about that height of 160 feet, this 160 feet becomes h of t. I'm stopping the problem when it's 160 feet in the air, so I can find out what time it is. Then I get it equal to zero. And now that the quadratic is equal to zero, I can go to the quadratic formula. Okay, so I'm going to get t equals a negative of b plus or minus the square root of 128 squared minus 4 times negative 16 times negative 160. Okay, uh, that's all over negative 32. So, Negative 128 plus or minus. I don't know 128 squared, but if you want, you can figure it out. Uh, 1, 2, 8 squared, and that will equal 16,384. So I'm going to have 16,384. Subtract. This one I might be able to do in my head. 16 and 16 is 256. Uh, there's a zero I'm going to add on later. I'm going to double that, get 512. I'm going to get 1024, and then times 10, because I didn't use that zero there. All right, and it'll be a negative because there's three negatives, so 10,240. 10, and that's all over negative 32. Suppose I should simplify under the square root. And I'll have 16,384 minus 10,240. And so I'm going to get a 4, a 4, a 1, and a 6. So I've got negative 128 plus or minus the square root of 6,144 over negative 32. At this point, I'm ready to go to my calculator. So. Putting the numerator in parentheses. Here, let me clear all the screen off here. Okay, putting the numerator in parentheses, I'm going to put negative 128 plus the square root of 6,144. Close the parentheses for the square root. Close the numerator. Divide by negative 32. And I get an answer of about 1.55 seconds. Then my other possibility is going to be make that a negative, and I get 6.45 seconds. So my two times occur at 1.55 seconds and 6.45 seconds. Okay, so now the last problem. Now, if you were those people that had a hard time with the test, you don't have to watch the next problem. Okay, you may stop here. All right, so a rectangle has a perimeter of 149.2 meters and an area of 618.45 meters squared. Um, so there's two equations here. Perimeter is twice the length plus twice the width, that equals perimeter. So my first equation is 2L plus 2W, and that equals 149, oops, that doesn't look like a 4, 49 and 2 tenths. Now area can be used as length times width, right? So this equation becomes length times width, and the area is 618.45. All right. I'm going to solve this equation for either L or W. Uh, I think I'll solve for W. 
So I'm going to rewrite it, 2L plus 2W equals 149 and 2 tenths. I'll subtract 2L from both sides. Why am I doing that? I'm listening to Saddam. I'm trying to get the W alone. So I have 2W equals 149, 2 tenths minus 2L. Then I'll divide through by 2. Okay, so W is going to equal, uh, let me see, it's 7, 74 and 6 tenths, I think. That doesn't feel right. No, 8, 9, yeah, that'll work. Okay, minus L. Now I take this value here. I take this and I put it into this equation for W. Why can I do that? Because it says W equals that, so I can substitute it in its place. So I'll do L times the quantity of 74 and 6 tenths minus L, and that will equal 618 and 45 hundredths. I'll distribute, and I'll get negative L squared plus 74.6L equals 618 and 45 hundredths. Negative L squared plus 74.6L minus 618 equals 0. Why did I do that? Well, it's a quadratic, and I want to use the quadratic formula on it, and we need it equal to 0. So, now I'm ready for the quadratic formula. And so if you want to identify A, B, and C, you go right ahead. A is negative 1. B is 74 and 6 tenths. C is negative 618, 45 hundredths. So in this case, it'll be L, because L is acting as my x variable. Negative of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4. A, C, the whole thing is over 2A. So simplifying this as best I can before I go to my calculator. This is going to get ugly, but the cool thing is the answer is going to come out easy. So I'm going to score 74 and 6 tenths. I don't have any cool tricks for that. So 74 and... 6 tenths times itself is equal to 55, 65, and 16 hundredths. So we're going to get 55, 65, and 16 hundredths minus, how do I know it'll be negative? Because there's three negatives being multiplied. 4 times 618. So 4 times 618 and 45 hundredths. All right, 2473.8. 2473.8. The whole thing is over negative 2. And if you think you're bored, my daughter is here watching me trying to understand what I'm doing, and she just yawned. So I think she's a little bored too, and now I can't put that down. Okay. All right, there we go. I need to do those two numbers, the difference of those two numbers. So 55, 65.16 minus 24, 73, and 8 tenths. And that means my discriminant, or the, yeah, my discriminant is 3,091 and 0.36. 3,091.36, so I'm going to have negative 74.6 plus or minus, and I can't remember what that was, uh, 3091.36, so 3091.36 over negative 2. Okay, now I'm going to go to my calculator at this point. And I'm going to put the numerator in parentheses. So let me clear all that other junk out of the way. Okay, well, that's not going to work. All right, so I'm going to go with the quantity of negative 74 and 6 tenths plus the square root of, what was my discriminant? 
30, 36. So 3091.36. Now I'm going to close that quantity and I'm going to close the numerator and I'm going to divide it by negative 2. And there's one of my answers. Either the length of the width is 9.5 units long. If I'm in meters, 9.5 meters. Now to get the other one, I could do one of two things. I could take the area and divide it by that, or I can do like I would for a quadratic. Go and change that positive to a negative, and then I will get the other one. So this means the rectangle is 9.5 by 65.1. And I should put the proper units on there. I can't remember them at the moment. So let me go back up and look. And we are in meters. So meters by meters. And there you go. All right, that's it for the video. Mr. Lawrence signing off. Have a good night, everybody.